Where is he? Ladies and gentlemen, live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's the Smallville Panel! You guys, this is gonna be good. With Quark Cat, Tom Welling! And introducing... And Lex Luthor, Michael Wisman. Introducing all the way from Krypton, Toronto, Canada. You've seen her in a lot of things, but she's our Supergirl. Give it up for Laura Vanderbilt. <laughs> and you've seen him in everything from Minority Report to Risky Business. Tom Cruise impressionist, Sam. Happy to be here. Uh, thank Next you. Next question. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, we'll be at our tables after. Come say hello. All that shizzle. Uh, sorry for swearing yesterday, but I might swear again. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Whoa, F bomb. How many kids are people want to hear F bomb? They're like, yeah, cursing. You're in Georgia. All right. Well, what are we doing here, Tom? I want to hear the first question for Laura. Who's got a question for Laura? Who's got a question for Laura Vanderpump? Oh, yes. <laughs> there's one. Oh, there's one. Right Let's there. get a question for okay. Laura. Yell, okay. yell the question. Go ahead. Okay. So. No, okay, okay. so just okay. a question. <laughs> Is said child here? I got great advice. Stand up. Don't let them do it. <laughs> They're wasting your money and time. It's look. It's 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 incredibly difficult. I'd say if the child is passionate about acting, loves acting, there's nothing else this kid wants to do. I'm sorry. I think this question is for Laura. <laughs> He's not the same time. I'm so passionate about it. Laura, I take over. My bad. My bad. Is that correct? It's okay. I'm used to it. It's fine. It's Michael. Um, uh, it's a good question. I started acting when I was 12. Um, there's been ups and downs. If it's something, like Michael said, that she's passionate about, and I'm sure she is, then it's worth pursuing. Um, just make sure you're doing the, the things that you want to do and not being taken down a road you don't want to go down. Take classes, start doing background work. I started doing background work in commercials and then just kind of worked my way up. But you just have to protect yourself. It's a, it's a tough industry. It's, uh, it's not easy. But if you love it, try it. Tom chipped his tooth on a hamburger. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, he did. On a hamburger? I mean, what kind of hamburgers are here in Atlanta? <laughs> How'd you do that, buddy? I don't want to talk. I'm actually upset about it. I don't want to talk about it. Was this today? <laughs> Last night. Last night. Yeah. I want to talk about it. Okay. All right. Sorry. Well, you were intimate, intimate about it. Laura was. I'm not on your goddamn podcast. Look, <laughs> you've been on the podcast many times, but Tom, literally the mic's just like, I chewed my tooth on a hamburger. I did it! All right. I don't know. I don't know. About Somehow it. responsible. I'm not happy, guys. All right. Let's move on. Next question, please, is, is who? I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. I asked that same question to the writers, and they were like, does it matter? Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I don't need to know. I just need to play the scene, so. Water! And then somebody said, I guess I'm wearing a watch, like the old Clark Kent watch in the scene. And someone online made the watch a different color. I was like, oh, that's blue, crypt whatever kryptonite it is that take. No, it was just a regular watch. 
Uh, but Clark lost his powers. To be honest, I don't know why, and it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> he just didn't have it. And now I have COVID. <laughs> First COVID joke of 2021. Who's got a question for Sam Whitworth? <laughs> really, guys? It's a tough audience. Sam, what was it like putting up with us? There's one right there. We got, we got a question. We got a question for Sam right here. Oh, thank God. All right, I had, I had a better one. Okay, so this is um, for uh, Sam Whitworth and also Michael Rosenbaum is welcome to um, answer. But what was the moment that, because like both of you guys start out as like good. What's the question? Ah, okay, just here. ignore him, ignore him. Patience is a virtue. Um, what was the moment that you felt like your character sort of made that turn and became a person? Like, when were you reading um, your scenes and went, oh, like, I mean, I knew you obviously knew that he was going to be a villain, but when did you think that shift happened? When, when did he become a villain? Yes. I think, thank you. Great thank question, you. Michael. I don't, um, I don't think he was a, you weren't a villain? Yeah, uh, well, I think when I threw my father off the building and Wait, killed him. I it was first Sam. Sam! Oh. <laughs> you didn't know the answer? Well, I threw his father off the building. Oh, no. Oh, I was wild. No. I was wild. Come on, Look at him. I threw him out of the building. I don't know. You know what? Wait, you know what I like about your walking impression? That no one really does. And I so, when you do it, I'm like, he knows it. Because. Everyone likes to keep their walking up here and they forget that it comes down here. No, no, no. He wishes. Here's the he thing about walking. He gets down there. Sometimes he does this. He goes That's down. I miss right. Kristen and Erica. <laughs> you miss Kristen and Erica? You love being around the boys! I do, but I miss the girls. Um, <laughs> um when he stabbed Jimmy. That's a pretty villainous turn. Did I stab Jimmy? Uh, no, I threw your father out the window. You stabbed Jimmy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, with Davis, it was always sold to me that he was a good guy who was afflicted. And so I tried to always play him as a good guy who was trying not to be a monster. Which, funny enough, led the casting director for Smallville to hire me for being human, which was a monster who didn't want to hear uh, Wow. 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 So, what I was saying. No. So I think, like Sam said, by the way, if I would have become evil in the first episode, first season, it would have got really boring. So you're always like, they always say when you're crying as an actor, you always should fight the tears and not try to cry because no one wants to cry. So I didn't want to become evil, so I tried to play every scene like it was, like I was, I was good, I had good intentions, I was doing the right thing. Tom, Clark Kent is the reason Lex Luthor is bad. He lied, he's a lying actor. I don't think, I don't think Lex Luthor is bad. All right, good. I really don't. I wish Clark would have known that. Now <laughs> right, real quick, this person's got a question. With that movie back in the day, we got to write and direct and act in it. I'm wondering if you had any more projects like that. Yes, uh, Tom and I are working on a project right now. We wrote the script and we, we love it. So it's a buddy comedy we're trying to sell. Wouldn't you like to see that one? Wow, no, 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 hold on. This is, so he wrote it. I don't write. I can't write a fucking thank you note. <laughs> he, write, he wrote this thing and my wife on page like 14, I was reading each page of it, and I was like, hey babe, listen to this, hey listen to this, and she's like, okay, stop. She's like, I'm trying to make dinner, and you're annoying me. Because every page was so funny what he wrote for, for us to play these characters, that hopefully you guys get to see this soon. Yeah, because I too. We, we it's so nice. And it's reminiscent of, there's a little Smallville-esque, uh, through life. It, it's about the life after the life. Yeah, yeah it's the life after the life. <laughs> you know how you do it. It's the life after the life. The life after the life, you know? All right, who's got a next question? Go ahead, lady standing up. Hey! Hey! 
Hi, my name is Jalisa. My question is for Laura. Oh, oh, Jalisa. Oh, Jalisa. Good morning, Lisa. Jalisa. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry about that. So since you got the chance to be both a villain and a hero, if you were to guest star on the new Superman Lois, which one would you choose? What's the difference? I think every villain believes they're a hero, and that's why they're interesting. It's poor Laura. Collection of people laugh right now. Go. <laughs> I've already done it! Oh, alright. I've already done it. Um, yeah, I don't want to bore you with the joke. Although there are these two old guys. <laughs> two old guys are sitting in the front of a house, 90 year old men. And one guy says, Joe! We're the same age. One 90 year old says, Joe! Last night a bear came into my tent and went, ah! I shit my pants. The other guy says, Look, I'm going to be back in the light in the middle of the night. Ah, 
I shit my pants too. The other guy says, no, just a second ago when I went wrong. That's when I shit my pants. Thank you. I see a bright future. Hey, hey you. dude. Next question. This guy, like, I shit my pants this morning. There are people in line too, eh? Yeah, well, here we go. Next question. Yeah, rapid fire. Let's go. Rapid fire. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello, everyone. My name is Denzel Lisbon. Denzel. So, <laughs> so, Sorry, we met earlier. So my question is: uh, Back in the 2007-2008 television season, you had the writer strike. So in season seven, is there anything that we would have seen that was cut out because of the strike? No. What you did see, it's a very good question. Uh, the answer to your question is no, but what you did, what your question brings up is, I was on a seven year contract, and so that year of the writer's strike, it was, I was willing to walk away or come back. And what I did is I kind of looked at the and was like, there's not a lot of opportunities right now. <laughs> and I love this show and I love these people, so let's keep going. So because of the writer's strike, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to speak to your question. I signed back on for a number of more years. So, I don't think that, that is an answer to your question. It's not the answer you wanted. But the, because of the writer's strike, Smallville continued, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great question. I've never been answered. <laughs> Uh, hello, hi, uh, I'm Adam. Uh, this with me is for Tom. Uh, do you like the uh, Ring of Zero song, Save Me? I think it's one of the, one of the best <laughs> songs that could possibly, like, if I hear it right now, I get happy. And, <laughs> well, oh, you gonna play it? So, there's three theme songs that I think are the best ever. And I might be biased, Smallville is one of them. I'm not putting these in order. Smallville is one of them. Miami Vice. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you hear that fucking song? Magnum P.I. And then coming up shortly after that, believe it or not, is Dallas. What a nice so you know man. the old Dallas? That's a great thing for Oh. 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 
right? I'm a musician, so I'm going to do an 80s theme, and I need you to do the lead. I'm going to do the background, you do the lead, all right? I'm, you're going to find out. I need, you, I need you to do the lead, all right? You ready? All right, you ready? You know, but you do the lead. Is this Seinfeld? Sam has like an encyclopedia. He does. He really does. I have a backache. Incredible. Well, when it comes to the 80s themes, yes, because they were all so good, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. They had to be because that's what it is. Now TV shows come out and they're just like, let's just let's just get to let's just do the show, guys. Let's just get to the show. Let's just do it. Well, who else misses the 80s? Can you imagine going back now and being like 40 years old in the 80s? You'd kill me. Because nobody in the 80s knew what the fuck was happening. Little house on the prairie, folks. Have you seen you guys running down the, the aisles and like have one of you trip and fall down while that's playing? Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Next question. Next Can you question. fall and hurt yourself? Next question. Um, so my question is for Laura. Um, Again? So um, that you might like to be a villain. Today's Sunday. Um, <laughs> which of Supergirl's powers would you prefer and why do you think would be most helpful? Is that Sydney? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm sorry, they were talking. Can you repeat it? Yes. <laughs> so since you said that you might like to be a villain, um, which of Supergirl's powers do you think would be most helpful as your villain ring? Mm. <laughs> um, for a villain, probably speed, right? Or would it be flying? What's the best one for a villain? Speed? Yeah, get out of there as fast as possible. Is that another? The question is for you, Tom, Tom, what would be your super villain power? I'm a big fan of X-ray vision, if you know what I'm saying. Sydney's 15. Oh, super speed. Super speed. <laughs> Thanks, Sydney. <laughs> Sam agrees. I don't know. All right, sorry guys, but this was- The thing about X-ray vision though is, can you turn it off? Sometimes you don't want to- Sometimes you don't want to- I don't want to walk around with X-ray vision. I want to be like, I have to like touch my ear for it or something. Do you remember it was, an actual, it was an episode that I directed where you, it was the first time he ever did super breath. Oh yeah. And they threw it at me the day of, oh, we're gonna have Tom do the- do you remember that? We, we, we tried to figure it out. It I like, do. You and you asked me so, so you asked me too many questions. I <laughs> should correct the episode. I'm acting. <laughs> no, because because <laughs> I, I know why you're asking me. It's because it's like whether it's super speed or extra vision or all these things, we had to figure it out. And a lot of times we figured it out on the day. And you were directing the episode with Super Red. And as you get up there. What, help, what was helpful to me was when I talked to the visual effects people about, so if I do this, what are you guys going to show the audience? He didn't know that. <laughs> so he just kept saying, so what is your mouth going to look like when you do it? I, 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 you know, it there was a little disconnect in the best way I was It really came down to just let me do it. Super blow, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you're caught in this moment with your mouth open, blow it up. and you're expressing energy. I remember you were like, no, 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 it's going to be just quick, and I'm not going to look stupid. Just 
to make it a longer note, just put it in slow motion. It'll be longer. I was, I was worried about No, you were great. Especially that one. That, that power was, was harder to do than the rest of it. I would have used it all the time, just looking at something like... What's <laughs> that, dude? I would have done it after I had some like chick like shit lunch. Yeah. Well, it'd it been funny if we had like had my tongue out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. my hair is all frozen up. Sorry, yeah. what was the question? Next question. Next question. <laughs> okay. Is Sorry. there another question for Laura? No. no yes. No, 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 question for yes. Sam, please. <laughs> Sorry, it's for Laura. Fine. Fine. I, 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 I love you. Great, I, yeah, the I, just, Thank you. I was wondering if Laura could tell us how she inadvertently brought down an identity theft ring. Oh, yeah. Why well, was well, Kristen and Eric here? I don't think it's like a, it's really public knowledge. Um, what was that, like five years ago, maybe? Yeah, about five years ago, I helped the FBI. Um, there was an identity theft ring that was using fake passport photos, and they used a set photo from V. Um, as a passport photo, and the security officer recognized me from Smallville and said, you're not Laura. And the FBI called me and I had to confirm and help them get the, it was, we took down an identity theft ring. So it was cool. So a Canadian helped the FBI to put down, really? Yeah, they, they called my manager first, and he thought it was bizarre, but then we spoke to an officer and confirmed it was a legit, not weird thing. Where were the people? No. Where were the people? There was an article about it. I don't remember. I want to read this article. Yeah. That's I'll send it to you. Crime fighting. Crime fighting, yeah. Yeah. Next question, please. That's some super girl shit right there. Yeah. That's an SGS. <laughs> super girl shit. So this question is for Tom. Um, yeah. If you could play any other character other than Clark Kent. Can I answer it? Batman. Yeah. Or did you mean on Smallville? On Smallville. Okay. Batman. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that have been awesome? I mean, not me playing Batman on Smallville, but I would have, and I, I, I think I spoke to this yesterday as well, but like, Batman should have crossed through Smallville somehow. And I think he should have crossed on Lex's path. Um, but what do you think, what character would you play in Smallville other than Batman? <laughs> Lex Luthor. Yeah. Where did that? She did it. Look, it's actually... Where is it? You looked it up online. She actually... <laughs> so just so you guys know, Laura is an FBI informant. <laughs> I've got so much intel on you guys, you have no idea. <laughs> Sam, by the way, can you give me an audition for like a Star Wars character? Since you're Darth Maul, right? Right. Can you give me an Can I get you an audition for a Star Wars? What? Can I get you an audition? An audition for a voiceover, anything. Yeah, I could. I'm not going to, though. Okay. <laughs> I really want to have a voice in a Star Wars. It's where I never even get asked to, never even audition for I'm sure you could get everyone here to start a petition for you. Yeah. Not that you need it, you could probably That one guy it. right there, one right there, is like, yeah, I'll help you on that. <laughs> uh, dude, to, to actually answer your question, go for it, because there's so many projects out there right now, there's never been more opportunity to, to try to get in there. We hear everything you're saying, we hear what JP's saying. JP, we can hear you. Hi, JP. Hi, JP. You, uh -huh. you should hang up, you might say something. Uh, okay. So his agent is helping his wife with a screw gun somehow. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. That did not sound right, but that's what's going on. JP is at your house and he's like, where's the screw gun? Ask my wife. That's what you just said. I just want you to know that. Next question. <laughs> so, so I just got married um, two days. Congratulations. <laughs> so it's got me thinking about love and couples, of course, and I'm wondering for all of you, although my name is Laura, so she can start. Uh -huh. um, uh, 
uh, what's your favorite couple from Smallville? Uh, Clark and Lex for me. <laughs> Lex. It is. I mean, I just remember going to work and knowing that, like, I was going to work with him and I just felt better. Oh, shucks. Not that I didn't feel good about him, but, but, like, when I would go to work and, like, we ended up getting to a point, because I got into the executive producing part of it, I was like, listen, at no time should the first scene of the day be with a guest star that I just haven't met before. Like, that's just rude to them and rude to me and whatnot. But I was happy to work with, like, everybody, and that's, I think that's why the show worked so well, because we were all there to help each other. Like, if you guys really look at the scenes that we had to do, <laughs> they're ridiculous. <laughs> Some of them are. You know? But then, I got to be with him. I got to be with you. I got to be, like, it's, that's what, that the energy that you enjoy watching the show comes from the energy between the actors. Yeah. It's really not what's written on the And each one's Even different. though it was well written, like, don't get me wrong, but like, we all just tried to make it better. And that's why we last, you know, there's, you know, I think there's only 30 something shows in the history of television that have lasted 10 years. And we're one of them. Like, it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Sam, what about you? Oh, um, I rather liked uh, uh, Oliver Queen and uh, Mercy. I, I liked that sort of ex-relationship relationship thing that they had going on. Yeah. Yeah. I like like Tom. Justin. I like the, I mean, I loved the dynamic with me and my father Glover, uh, Lionel Luther. That was always fun because you never know what was going to happen. It was always kind of the dark side of small of us, so that was cool. Next question. Uh, my question is for. Uh, Sam and Michael, um, what's it like being known for playing villains versus with Tom and Laura? They're more known for playing heroes. How is that different for you playing, being known for, you know, villains and not heroes? Are you known? Um, oh, we can't cast Michael Rosenbaum. He was a villain. <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Hopefully. I I, yeah, I mean, Hopefully, yeah. casting directors are smart enough to look past that shit. But anyway. Well, and yeah, I want to. I want to sort of let's let's maybe me and Michael could figure this out right now. Now, Michael, I know for me, one of the big advantages in getting cast as villains is that I look like a psychopath. <laughs> and I have rusting psychopath face. Check this out. You want, here's me smiling. <laughs> and Darth Vader. Right. Like, see this? They're like, his subtext is he's thinking about killing everyone in the room. <laughs> Let's use it. But, yeah, no. I don't know. What do, what do you, why do they, why? Uh, you know, I, here's the thing, I wasn't. Before I got Smallville, I was playing, I was in Sorority Boys, and I was in like all these <laughs> go goofy movies, and even after, I did a show called Impastor, and I did it like, so I, I don't, oh, I, I never played a villain. Smallville's the only thing I played a villain on for the most part. And Lex wasn't a villain. He wasn't a villain, guys. And he was a, a tortured soul who uh, his best friend liked him constantly. And uh, <laughs> you know, as well as heartache and pain. And uh, eventually he just said, no, I don't trust anyone. I'm tired of it. No one uh, is nice to me and I'm going to kill. <laughs> well, Michael, I also think some of the most brilliant actors are ones that do comedy. And you're a great actor, so you could play the villain easily. You know what I mean? You're, comedy's the toughest thing to do. Can you see that well? Thank you. Yeah, that's true. You really said this. <laughs> said, you know what? I she feel like it's, she's right in the sense yeah. that uh, playing a villain really, I, I, didn't, I mean, look, it was challenging, but for some reason, comedy, you're always having to take it, to trade it, to try to make it the funniest. When you're doing a drama, you just read the lines and you become that character. You don't keep to doing take after take of the, like, oh, we need a better line. We need Comedy's always trying to be, trying to be as funny, as funny as possible. And there's something easy about, you know, being, being a villain or just regular acting, like drama, than comedy. Yeah, not it's, that it's less easy, work, but, I think. Yeah, you're used to really putting the grind in for comedy and yeah. perfected that. So the villain part is not easy, but it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next question. Great question. Good question. Yes, uh, this is Adam again. Uh, this question is again for Tom. Uh, can you talk about your experience on Lucifer? I'd rather not. Oh. You loved it. Joking, joking, sorry. No, Lucifer is great because I, what I try to do is everything different than what Clark would have done. Um, and in fact, I thought about Lex 
and Michael a lot because I played a character who was actually three characters who was not only three steps ahead, but like a century ahead of everything that was going to happen. So it was a lot of fun, and what I'm trying to do, I've talked to the, um, the head of Warner Brothers and the creators of Lucifer, and I'm trying to make a show about Cain, that I would be Cain, and figure out different time periods that he would, that he would see him in, because he was, he's been around forever. Um, but I guess to answer your question, I tried to do everything opposite of what Clark would do. That's what I did. Yeah, nice. Good question, thank you. <laughs> All right, my question is for Tom. I read an article a while back saying the reason you never wore the Superman uniform was because you were afraid to be typecast. I thought it was because he had too much junk. <laughs> no, that's not true. The reason I didn't wear the, the suit is because of my original contract. I said that I wouldn't. And, and the reason behind that was because I wanted to play a character in, I wanted to keep that character in the pilot alive. I wanted to play a character that was a kid in high school who had these abilities, who never knew where he was going to go or what he was going to do with them. And I knew, somehow, in my ignorance, that really quick they just put the suit on me and I'd run around like Arrow or Flash <laughs> and just save people. And I wasn't interested in that. And it was very helpful. And I will tell you that it was like halfway through season two, there was a script that they were like, and Clark puts on the suit. And I was like, hey, you guys know that this isn't. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, no, literally. Like, in a legal sense, I'm not wearing it. And I think it helped us get 10 years. And that's why what you see at the end of the series, that moment, we could have done that season two and the show would have been over. You see what I'm saying? So, like, that's why. We didn't put the suit. I agree. In Smallville, it was a show about a kid in high school. It was about yeah. It was about it's the yeah. story before he becomes yeah Superman, and the story before I become like yep. Luther the villain. Yep. So it's it just made a lot of sense, and uh, yeah. I know people wanted to see it at certain times, but I'm glad it was consistent. It was hard. It was hard, you guys. Like they really wanted to just jump the shark real quick. Um, I think we lasted ten years because of that. Yeah. I mean. I think it too. Were they angry at you? Yeah. Because it's interesting, because yeah. I, I completely agree with you. You did them the biggest favor on the planet by refusing. And, and, it's, and they knew from day one. Like, it's not like I surprised them. I mean, going along with what you're saying, like, they knew this, but they kept trying. You know, it's, it's like when you're dating someone, they keep trying to get you to do something you don't want to do. And you're like, I told you I'm not into that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means, they don't want to talk about that. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even know where that came from. Because like, I told you. Your action figures? I'm sorry, you know, I don't do that. I'm sorry. I just... Go ahead and say You're so red. I know. I don't know why they keep... That's what they kept doing. They kept asking me to do that. And I didn't want... I'm not into that. <laughs> You, but, but to do the thing at the end with the suit is your idea, yes? Yes. I actually... So the this, this series finale was very different when it, when it, on the script than when I read it. And I'm, I'm not trying to be... like I didn't get anything out of it, but I, I, I didn't agree with it. And for me, what, I was a big fan of 24. You guys ever seen 24? <laughs> So the end of that series is Jack Bauer, there's like a satellite image of him, and, and the idea of him leaving was he's going, but we can't go with him, right? And I was a big fan of 24. I, I, was, I would come home from Smallville and watch 24. Like, that was my thing. And that's what they did, and I was like, that's what we need. We need to see this character about to go somewhere, that we can't go with him, but we know he's out there. And he's in our hearts, and like that's. I mean, I wrote the, the I wrote the ending, and I called Peter Roth about it, and because they wanted me to like get in the suit, fly up to a plane, and like spend an hour saving people. And I was like, Do you guys remember my contract? <laughs> <laughs> and so like this thing, that's why it's that way because Smallville was about a kid in high school who needed to go forward, and we've all had that moment, hopefully, in our lives, in different stages, 
And uh, I don't know, I'm really proud of it. I think it, yeah, I think it was a good ending. I'm good. Uh, yeah. I like that story. That was a good story. I haven't really heard that story. Good story. <laughs> good, good talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I've ever really explained it that way, but that's yeah. what happened, man. I dig it. Next question! Rapid fire! Rapid fire! Real fast now! Hi, sorry, I'm Lauren. Um, Hi, you Lauren? Lauren. Oh, Lauren. Yeah. I grew up watching this with my grandma, and the villains were always her favorite. I actually lost her the night of the season oh, eight finale. Sorry. So this show always had a great meaning to me. And she loved you as Davis, by the way, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> Davis. You want to like plug it like this? Well, actually, my question is Did she get to see that part? She did, yeah. But my question is actually for you, Tom. Um, when you played Cal, when you had the red crept night, did you prefer or but how would you enjoy playing those scenes, getting to play that different side of Clark Kent instead of being like the good hometown boy from Smallville? I mean, the bad dude being Cal. That's a very good question, and it's always fun to play someone different, but to play your own character differently is fun, no matter what direction, whether it's happy, sad, or, or you know, red kryptonite or not. It's just exciting. And I did feel like, I felt more of my body, I felt more loose, you know, um, cause Clark is pretty, uh, Clark was pretty stationary, if that makes any sense, he's very stable. And so it was fun to sort of move around a little bit, so I really enjoyed you it. You loved, you got into it. I mean, yeah, it was fun watching him being able to be bad and be like, cause when you're used to playing a certain type and then all of a sudden they let you, kind of get dirty a little bit? Well, yeah, because Clark was always worried about what was going to happen, and Red Clark didn't give a shit. <laughs> and that was, a, that was a big moment, like, I don't care what's going to happen right now, what's up, you know? So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, for Mr. Michael Rosenbaum, yeah, so um, long. you are my favorite version of Lex Luthor. <laughs> My question Questions is... Questions for me! <laughs> um, my question is, oh, who is have, yours? We all have to listen to your question. I listen to you! Oh, sorry. No, you don't have to listen. Sorry, Come question on. for Michael? Okay. Yes, go ahead, sorry. Um, Say the best Lex Luthor again, though. He didn't give it up. No! <laughs> I'm joking, go ahead. Oh, no. Um, who is your favorite version? Don't please say... Please don't say you. No, I would never say me. Gene um, Hackman. I always loved him. Gene Hackman, I always loved, that's how I remember Gene, uh, Lex Luthor is Gene Hackman. Definitely not Kevin Spacey. No, but people would always ask me, like, you know. John Cryer, no. No, John who's the guy? Who's the geeky guy from the other thing that did it? I don't know. Well, that's like a Superman movie. Jesse Eisenberg. He's in, huh? Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. I, he was mis I think he was directed incorrectly in that role. Yeah. Yeah. I have no comment. <laughs> on any of these things other than... Uh, I will answer all Michael's questions. <laughs> I love, love Gene Hackman. Um, yeah. I told the story yesterday, but I remember one guy, I remember in line, he waited 20 minutes in line and comes up and goes, Gene Hackman's the best Lex Luthor ever! And I go, I agree! And he goes, Ugh. <laughs> that happened. But Gene Hackman, thanks It's like Gene it. Hackman, Keanu Reeves... <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> Keanu Reeves was not Lex Luthor. Uh, no, no, no. I would like to ask Michael Rose about a question. Uh, the last question. Michael, here's your chance. Can you give us a, a Miss Tessmacher? You know what I'm talking about? Miss Tessmacher! <laughs> Miss Tessmacher! <laughs> Damn it! How was that? It was great. Thanks. Who's there, Gene Hackman? But that, how did that sound? Gene Hackman, Keanu Reeves, Woody Harrelson. These guys are never bad in what they do, if you like them. Tom Cruise is the same way. Harrelson. If you like Tom Cruise, he's awesome in everything. If you don't like Tom Cruise. Wait a minute, that's Tom Cruise down there. Tom Cruise in. The secret of doing a Tom Cruise impression is one, tighten your sphincter. And also, 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 do a Rod Sterling thing. Submit it for your approval. Your approval! Your approval! I love it, I love it. 
Next question, next question. Hey, um, so my question is for Sam. Um, so I, I'm a fan, I'm a huge fan of like uh, voice acting. All of you have done great jobs between you know Flash or Mary Jane or in this case Darth Maul. But yours has been kind of different and unique in the last few years in the respect of kind of sharing this with uh, Ray Park where you would voice it and he did live action solo or the motion capture for Clone Wars. Can you talk a little bit about what that's like sharing a character with another actor at the same time? Well, you know, okay, when it comes to any of these characters, be it in the Superman universe or the Star Wars universe, the way that I look at it is, it, it's not my character. It's my character, sure, but but there, okay, think about Darth Vader. How many people played that character? James Earl Jones, uh, David Prowse, Matt Lanter, Jake Lloyd, Hayden Christensen. Um, uh, I'm, I'm missing yeah, actually yeah. a few. What's that? Uh, Sebastian Shaw. Uh, I could go on and on. And all of those people came together to create a character, right? So the way I always looked at it was the most important thing was. George Lucas and what he wanted, and I got to fulfill this part of the character, right? Which is really fun, really, really fun. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, yeah, it's, it's when, you, when it comes to these mythologies, like, like take Smallville, these are, these are important mythological touchstones to our society, and they are great teaching tools for young people. <laughs> when is, <laughs> <laughs> Instagram no. Oh, here it goes. So I had it. <laughs> and and you can see that we all take it very seriously. <laughs> and then it's, but like when I when I met Tom, for example, I, it was like, it, it was a very cool moment to see him dress as Clark Kent. I'm like, my God, it's, it's Clark Kent from the pages of the comic book. Here he is, you know. So my job was not necessarily to think about myself. It was you know in terms of. Davis Bloom or Darth Maul, it was to create that piece of mythology for the fans. That's the most important thing. Whereas, if you go on the set of Being Human, it's all about my ego. It's mine. <laughs> Which, that, that's not even true because, you know, that, that was a, you know, a reimagining of a British series. So even that, you know, like, I don't know, I find that the less you make these things about yourself, the more you make it about the storytelling, the better they turn out. So. So I just wanted to say, first of all, I can't believe I'm standing here. This was my show all through high school, Thank and you. I love you all. Um, and yes, Michael, you are also my one and only Lex Luthor. So I just had to say that you're amazing. Much. Um, He's single. He's very single. <laughs> Couldn't be more single. It's <laughs> Wait, um, is that true? You really couldn't be more single. You feel good. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. You know what I'm, I'm married, but so thanks. I'm gonna go back to you. God bless you and your husband. I'm just saying he's single. I didn't see you. I think she had a question for you. But yeah, my is question is for you, Tom. So, following people like Dean Cain as Superman and Christopher Reeve, of course, uh -huh. had to be difficult. So, how did you decide to put your own spin on being Clark Kent? There's no easy way to say this. They, they were, they were really not a consideration for me. Um, they were zero. Like I really didn't think about them, and I mean that in the most humble way because I've met both of them and they're awesome guys. But you have to understand, I played Clark, who would have never had any of the information from either of those characters, and that's where I came from. Oh, oh. Just your table. Oh. <laughs> But the, to answer your question, like, I really, Smallville was all about this guy. We all knew where he was going to go. The story was how he was going to get there. And it took us 10 years to tell that story. And after 10 years, literally, it was like, we're out of stories. Like, we were done. Um, I'm glad. I mean, there's a big difference between season five and six when we go to Metropolis and the Red Blue Blur, which, honestly, I fucking that was so stupid. Like, we all knew what that was about, you know what I mean? But, to answer your question, I just tried to, I, I didn't think about those guys a lot. I really didn't. I, I tried to, Clark didn't know what he was doing. 
Neither did I. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good question. Hi, I'm Kim again. I have a question if, um, actually it's for all of you, but mostly for um, Tom and Mike. I was wondering if there's any genre of... Um, How are you connecting these <laughs> figures? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I know, it's hard. Follow about the wall. How? Um, How? Did you ask a question? No, I have a question. How did you get the access uh, to the speaker? Room? So anyone can do it? Secret. I want to do a Western. I want to. I do. I know you told me. Yeah. <laughs> so, who, what do you think, man? I, I, I do a Western. I want to do a Western. That's one of the things on my bucket list. I can see you coming, like sitting side side, coming in on a horse. Yeah. And I'll be really mistreating you, and then you just shoot him in the head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's write it. I love to play a Western, man. I'd love to do that. Oh. Uh -huh. really you be like the banker. No, man. I grow. <laughs> I grow some chops, homie. I'd have some messed up teeth, and I would say, What you looking at, boy? I can born to do a Western. Right? Sam, you want to do a Western? Sam, you want to do a Western? He'd be evil. No. Why? Have you seen his smile? It's so given. It's really cute. My, see my white. You smile. When you smile, it's so... You've got a nice smile, Sam. You must use... A little like the Joker. The See, the whole thing about the smiling, is just so you guys can go and teach us to your friends, keep the, the eyes dead. <laughs> Smile with your eyes. <laughs> so, later today when you're in your fun walks, remember this. Smile with your eyes, not your mouth. What's wrong? Is this not how you humans express joy? <laughs> So he's the great on Galaxy Quest. He's the Galaxy. German guy. He's the German guy who shows up to town. He's like the German gunfighter. Oh. Yes, unfortunately for you today, Western knows you're dead. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. take you down. Bang, bang, Mr. Western guy. <laughs> bang, bang, you're dead. I think we should write this. This sounds a little bit out of Does anybody have their daughter or 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 Nazis in the Wild West. Alan Rickman in the Wild West. Hello, Mr. Cowboy. You do not play with a stick shooter! Sorry. <laughs> this town is not big enough for the both of us! And I will be your cartoon belly! <laughs> Somebody has to ask for my papers. Right? Nazis always ask for papers, right? Keep uh, my papers. <laughs> Draw your papers! <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, Mississippi! Bullshit! What would we call this? What would the name of this Western be? This would be Nazis in Mississippi. 
Nazi-sippy? Obviously, yeah. Nazi-sippy. Nazi-sippy. I'm sorry. Someone Isn't yelling that me. funny to you? We're not trying to insult you. <laughs> it's not, I'm Jewish. You can say, like, Nazi. Oh, you can say any Nazi horror movie. The, the, the Nazis are everywhere. I mean, not, no, I mean, it's movie. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, we did it. We did it. The Nazi yeah. thing, we did it. Yeah. Like, you know, like Inglorious Bastard meets a Western, that kind Still of thing. Go to hell if you don't like what I say. This is just me spitballing. Everywhere. Sprechen Sie etwas Deutsch, können Sie lesen und schreiben, weil das sieht Sie ein bei Union mit nur einem Fakten ab. By the way, next week it will be in Munich. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next question. I think we even made the camera nice smile. <laughs> all right, so in all iterations of the Superman universe, there's always been previous iterations that have guest starred, i.e., you know, Margot Kidder or whatever. Did the current productions reach out to you guys to guest star, or did you guys reach out to them? And then what was your favorite previous iteration that you got to work with? I don't guest star. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, they, they reached out to me a couple times, um, it just didn't seem right until we did the multiverse thing. And honestly, when I read what they, what they sent me, I was like, God damn it, this is awesome. <laughs> like, I just, uh, I, I could, I was, tr I literally took two days and tried to find a way not to do it. But I couldn't, because it was such a good idea. They, they, those guys were really smart. But, yeah, they've asked me to be on every other version of the show, and I, it just didn't feel right. But that one did. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, they, yeah, I mean, their way of keeping me around was like to hire me for Supergirl to play a real nasty jerk. Uh, different kind of guy from, from Davis Bloom, for sure. Um, so. Yeah, no, we're still there, no. What's up? I'm still, I'm still in it. Okay, okay. Come on, guys. Mature. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why does everybody have so comfortable at Nazi? <laughs> Tom just has the giggles. That's I just right. meant like they're in movies. As if, if I told you one walked in the door, would you do uh, Well, now I would like. <laughs> I would like that. Say, so Nazi be gone! <laughs> Next question. And this will actually be the last one. I'm last question. Oh, come right. on, let's do two more. That's okay, we'll do two more. more. Two more. I'll do whatever Tom tells me to. No, no, one more question. <laughs> I think it's Michael you have to listen to. Uh, this question is for Michael. Michael, I love how you just like to be yourself, and you obviously are comfortable in your skin. So did working on Smallville help you become who you are? I think everything you do, I think everything you do helps you become who you are. I think life helps you become who you are. Hopefully, you take the right path and you meet good people and you surround yourself with good people. It was an amazing time in my life to play that character, and I learned a great deal from it. Um, and I built some great relationships. And um, but I, I think it helped. It's part of my life, so it helped me become who I am today. But I, you know, like doing the podcast really to me helps me open up with guests and. They've been on, and um, Mike, Mike, Michael's been a big proponent, and um, and I and, and I enjoy this about therapy. And what I mean by that is when when you're an actor, your 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 job is to figure out the motivations of your character and why they do what they do, and you you, you can create backstories and you know four stories and whatnot. But there's an introspective thing where you have to look inside of yourself. And that that's your job. And that hopefully you start doing that as a person as well. And you just learn about yourself. You learn about what works for you, what doesn't, what works for your character, whatnot. And it's a and it's a it's an important thing. And and hopefully I'm not making anybody uncomfortable with this, but you talk about it in your podcast. Yeah, talking about mental health. But it's like life. if you can think about your motivations and why you do what you do, it's even better. And it, it just and, and that makes you a better actor. I don't know if that has anything to do with what that question just was, but 
I just see him doing that, and um, I think we're all better off. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> I just honestly want to be the best person I could be. And sometimes, you know, I'm. I really see you trying. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really hard on myself, but I think that that's what we all strive for: is to be a good person. It's so much yeah. easier to be nice than to yeah. be an asshole. It's a lot of energy to do, you know? Just be nice to people, right? That's what I'm trying to do. There you go. Last so, question. So this is a question for Sam. Sam. Of all the characters that you have played, which one would you say was your favorite? Ooh. Of all, all of the characters? Yes. Oh, that's like, that's like choosing a child. So which one is your favorite kid type thing? Um, Come on, I, Sophie. I, I will tell you that... Which one would you love to do tomorrow? Uh, Maybe, is oh, that a... Is that uh, a <laughs> well, okay, I, there, I love it for different reasons. I, I love the opportunity in being human to play a very serious character and have it be funny to the audience. You know, have the audience be laughing, but I don't think it's funny, you know? I thought that was really fun. Um, but to, to keep it relevant to this, uh, what we're talking about here, um, you know, you say, you say the typecasting thing, or, you know, get uh, cast as villains and stuff like that. The wonderful byproduct of any kind of typecasting is you get cats. That's <laughs> kind of cool. and, and I have to, you know, you know, something I've never done in all the times that I've met Michael Rosenbaum, uh, who's an actor, um, <laughs> I've never actually thanked him because his, his portrayal of Lex... Don't do it now. <laughs> okay. Please so do it. Darth Maul do it. was no, do it. Do it. No. <laughs> never actually thanked him for, because his portrayal, what he did on Smallville, was hugely. Um, it, it caused me to really take the role because I saw what someone could do in that type of, of role, and him being so great in that role, I was like, "Yeah, this would be an interesting challenge." And then, of course, I was like, "And I'm not going to do this. Is going to be I, now I'm going to be compared against him, so that sucks." But. Um, I, I love what he's doing, and, and this gives me a sense of what they might allow for a character in this. Really, you know what it is? Is any of these roles, if they're difficult, I love doing them. If I'm afraid of doing them, then I want to do it, type thing. I, I think seeing Michael's work made me very afraid to do Smallville, so I'm like, well, I guess I want to do it then. Does that make sense? Wow. You, you are quite terrified. Thank you. You know what's funny is, um, we gotta go, but I'm terrified in everything I do. Every role, I'm terrified. Playing Lex, I was terrified because all these people are expecting Gene Atman's the best in this. And what do I do? And all I said to myself was, "Don't watch all the other shit. Just be grounded. Say the lines like a real person, and be true to the character. And lean into it. Lean into it. And, and exciting. And it was. It was. And it was. It was. Dude, I was terrified. I thought I was gonna get fired for the first season like every day. I was trying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been fantastic. Give it up. <laughs>